Mm -hmm. which has led Jalen to make the point repeatedly. They're beating them at their own game. So here we go, Mr. Rose, Mr. Rose Stradamus. Mm -hmm. Game five tonight in Oakland. What do you expect? The Golden State Warriors will find a way to win. I think Klay Thompson finally emerges. Andre Iguodala scores in double figures. Draymond Green has been consistently good throughout this series. Kevin Durant has shown he's unstoppable based on his points per game. Now for the Houston Rockets to get a win, you need a signature game from James Hart. If he's going to give me 50, Zach Lowe, then they have a legitimate chance to win on the road. I would hope so. But his season averages won't get it done. So there's that side of it. And I think the officiating also is a piece of this tonight, right? Seth Greenberg was here yesterday making the point, if the refs let them play, that clearly favors Houston. Absolutely. It always favors the underdog if they allow you to play. Yeah, and they're the more physical team, mm -hmm. right? And that, that's the way they want to play. But, Zach, I want to talk to you about the ramifications. And this is what I mean when I say it's the most important game of the year, not only because we expect the winner of this series to go on and win the championship. We have no idea what will happen. But – if the Warriors should not get out of this series, which at this point feels like a conceivable possibility, how does that impact what, what figures to be a very interesting offseason, not just for Kevin Durant, but maybe for Klay Thompson as well? Yeah, I, I like what Jalen said, find a way, because they're going to have to find a way. This, I, this doesn't feel like a blowout going home to Oracle. Houston is the hungrier team. They feel like they, they believe, and, and credit to them. I didn't think they would believe after losing the first two. Me great, great two games at home. I, the KD one is interesting because all of the intel swirling around, I've never heard that whether the Warriors win or lose the title this year is going to impact his decision. So I'm not sure that the ramifications exist there. Clay is very simple, and Woj just said it, I've said it. You, you give him a max deal, he's staying. You don't give him a max deal, you open the door for lots of other teams, including the L.A. teams, to get into the bidding. I think win or lose... They view Clay as a foundational part of what we've built here, and they're going to reward him. So they've got a big five, I guess, if you will, if you include Boogie Cousins in this. Of those five, how many of them do you expect to be back next year, win, lose, or draw tonight and in this series? I would say three. The Splash Brothers and, uh, and Draymond. And, and Draymond and, yeah. and, and I agree. It. And KD gone and Boogie somewhere else. No, um, I think if I'm DeMarcus Cousins, I stay. Here's why. One-year deal? Yes. You don't want to be changing teams at this point injured. Okay, he had an injury last year to his Achilles. Now he hurt his quad. You're working with a specific training staff. You get a chance to play with the Warriors. They're going to be um, probably three-time champions in a row. You want to stay in that situation, get healthy, and then get paid versus trying to get paid right now. I just want to say one thing. I he keep hearing this, and you didn't quite say this, but a lot of people in the league are saying this, that this is the NBA Finals happening right now. Milwaukee, Toronto, whoever gets out of the East is going to have a lot. To, this yes. is not the de facto yes. NBA Finals happening right now. It's I not. agree. No, I, I think and Denver's both. better than people give them credit for. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think people. This is the matchup we wanted to see, and it, it does feel like like two heavyweights slugging it out in a lot of ways. But that does not mean that the winner comes out of this thing and just runs through the rest of the postseason as Golden State did a year ago. All right, let's get up and go. Get up and go. This morning is brought to you by Copper Tone Sports Clear. Joel Embiid clearly less than our. 100%. Toronto blew him out. Do you believe, Jalen, this series makes it to a game seven? Seven? Yeah. Oh, no. Wow. Toronto ends this thing in yeah, game this seven. Is, wow. Yeah, this is over. You agree with that, Zach Long? This is over. I think Philly at home's got a shot. I would say 60-40 Toronto. I, I'm going to pick Toronto to win tomorrow, but I think Philly has a shot going home. I think they have – is Joel Embiid going to be healthy? I don't I, – God only knows. I don't know anymore. You wouldn't bet on that. We'll be asking that question for a long time, it feels like. <laughs> a Nuggets routing the Blazers. Is that one over? Is Denver going to advance to the conference finals? I think that one's over as well. And the great thing about the Denver Nuggets is they found production from Paul Millsap against this Portland team against smaller lineups. He scored at least 20 the last two games, and we know the Joker's been terrific. Murray has gained confidence as well. A quiet 25, 19, and 6 last night for Nikola Jokic. <laughs> what Everything a, what he a does monster. And they do are quiet. Yes. That doesn't mean he's not, not the best yes. big man in the NBA. Oh, by the way, while you were sleeping, we had a no hitter last night. The what? first of this season, Mike Fires of the A's. No hit the Reds last night. Rewarding the fans who stuck around after a 90 minute lighting malfunction delay. He got some. <laughs> came into 2 o'clock in the morning Eastern time. He got help from his teammates.
teammates in the sixth inning, Jerkson Profar, Jerkson Profar, and Ramon Laureano making great plays on consecutive pitches in the sixth inning. You just saw them there. He becomes the eighth pitcher in baseball history as you see him wrapping it up there with a strikeout to throw a no-hitter for multiple teams his first game as an Astro in 2015. Yeah, there was a no-hitter last night. Shout out to the A's, the only team to stay in Oakland. Yeah. Stanley Cup playoffs. The Blues hosting the Stars. Game seven of a second-round series. Double overtime. Robert Thomas off the crossbar. Oh, no. Deflecting off Ben Bishop and St. Louis native Pat Maroon with the game winner. And the celebration was on. The Blues win at home, and on they go. Meanwhile, to football, let's talk about Le'Veon Bell, who made some headlines recently when he missed the Jets' voluntary minicamp last week. This week, he was asked by a fan on social media when he was going to show up to practice, and here's what he said. When it's time to play football, I got to stick to the formula that I know works for me to be the best player I can be. I'm not just trying to win football games. I want to win a ring. I want to desperately to show everybody what I can really do. I'll take the heat right now. Everybody will forget about that once January comes around. And so I will speak on behalf of Jet fans everywhere when I ask the following question to you, Swagoo. I understand that it's voluntary. Yeah. And believe me, I understand the definition of the word. But what I will ask is, when you get the huge contract and, and the organization has basically said, you're now our guy, you're the face of our franchise, even including the young superstar quarterback we're trying to build around, is it not a little bit of a bad look not to be there working with your teammates? It's a little bit of a bad look from this instance. The fact that you're not around the guys, right? That chemistry that we talked about with Cleveland earlier in the show. But with that being said, G, I would tell all of you Jet fans, you want the best Le'Veon Bell, right? And the best Le'Veon Bell has stuck to this regiment for like the last four years. And the production in Pittsburgh did not fall off. By the way, he was the best back in the league, mm -hmm. not his conference, in the league, the second leading receiver the last season that he played for Pittsburgh. So I get it from a PR standpoint, from being around your teammates, but these volunteer workouts now, quote unquote, get way overblown. It's, it's guys in and out, it's guys having babies, it's guys getting married, it's guys taking vacations in the middle because they just want to break away from football. So to have Le'Veon Bell there consistently is a misnomer to the general public that it's just this time for all guys to be available and it feels good to everybody. If I may, somewhere in between the weddings and the babies being born, <laughs> is there any opportunity for, for a running back who's going to be the focal point of the offense to start developing chemistry with a young quarterback? that he is now going to be joined at the hip with. I, in, yeah. in Pittsburgh, he's but, playing with Ben Roethlisberger, who's been there forever, and he knows the offense. Is there nothing but, to be said for that? Gee, here's the thing. Like, we, we, we're having a conversation about volunteer off-season workouts. Uh -huh. There has to be minicamp had. There has to be OTAs had. There has to be training camp had. And I'm sure once Le'Veon gets the jersey and they start working out, it's an everyday thing. Like, you don't – much doesn't change with Le'Veon Bell in his positions. There are – are no new plays that's going to be invented. The power play in the football is going to be the power play. The lead draw is going to be the lead draw. The check down where he lines, where he runs around and ends up over the middle of the line of scrimmage and Sam Darnold is able to have a 30-yard completion from a five-yard pass is still going to be relevant in whatever offense they run. So I, I would just tell people to pause. Now, here's the flip side. If he's not successful, then we can all point to these volunteer workouts. But I'd be damned if I go crazy that Le'Veon Bell is not a volunteer no, workout. No, I'll right make now. it clear. I don't think it will have any impact whatsoever on how he plays or doesn't play. I just do think there is something to be said yeah. for, I sat out an entire year, yeah, yeah. so some team could say to me, here's all this money, mm -hmm. come be our guy, and this team did, and now I, I, it's voluntary, so but, I got but, more but, important but things to do. But they knew he sat out a year. No, right? I understand. The, the, they get paid to vet and know if a guy is going to be available, and his availability hadn't been a question when he's actually on the field playing during the season. I understand. If yeah. he has 220 yards of combined offense in week yeah. one, I will forget completely I know you will. that he wasn't and he there probably will. when the weddings were being had and the babies, the babies were being, being born. born. <laughs> All right, we'll take a short time out here as we go on. Are the Celtics better off without Kyrie Irving? That is the question. We've got the answer next. Get up on ESPN.